for a lot of the media or the, the public debate about homelessness is usually framed around rough sleepers. But that's the tip of the iceberg because there's a lot of people who are not visibly homeless, so to speak. So we're dealing with roughly, at any one time, roughly about 600 uh, cases regarding what you would classify as homeless. But they could be families, you know, alcohol and alcoholism, domestic violence, unfortunately plays the predominant role in people being made homeless or people have been forced to leave their home because of a, a violent scenario to protect children, for example. The council does recognise the benefit of arts, the arts and culture. The council are struggling. Budget cuts are like we've had four hundred and sixty million pounds in budget cuts since twenty ten. We're not really in a position that we would normally be in where we could probably develop creative community programs where we could target hard to reach people because there's so many other demands on the pay strings at the moment. Because of the nature of the scale of the cuts and the crisis that we're facing at a local government level, it's probably never been more difficult to develop creative community programs for hard to reach people. And in terms of the days where people would look to the council to have a solution, we're just not in that place anymore. You know, we just got to be honest about that. If nothing is done, if no money, if no monies, if no energies, if no lobbying was spent on raising the issue of homelessness in Liverpool and the UK, you're casting uh, a section of our society adrift. You're washing your hands of those who are most vulnerable, who have been subject to unimaginable experiences. We're having to rely on working with the charity sector a lot more. And they're equally also under strain as well because of the way that their cuts to funding have been impacted on as well. Creativity has a huge impact on people's well-being. The Choir With No Name is a charity that runs choirs for people who have been affected or experiencing homelessness or are at risk um, or marginalised in society. So we work with people from all sorts of different backgrounds um, and the idea is that we've got choirs across the country um, and that people can come and join in an inclusive, welcoming, safe space. Our lovely little choir has been together for seven years and we've been collecting you all along the way and it's just such a beautiful thing to be part of. So we are celebrating tonight, even if we're stuck on Zoom. What we believe is that everybody deserves a place to sing their heart out with their friends and have some fun. And it shouldn't matter what situation you're in, it shouldn't matter what else is going on in your life um, or what box you fit into in society. Everybody deserves a place to sing and have fun. It just helps you with the confidence and to speak, speak out loud and to, to sing again. It's given me opportunities to try different things and to be in different places and to engage with different groups of people. Somewhere that I felt safe and able just to develop myself, develop my confidence. On lots of levels, like you can engage in the choir in a way that feels right for you. It's so important to like raise awareness of different issues that people face stigma for and and get ignored for and like people that are just invisible and sort of pushed aside. It's a sense of community that feels really important. We hadn't had all the, the phone calls and the Zoom rehearsals and all of this. I think we would have just felt completely apart from our choir family. And I, I think it's amazing what what the team has done to sort of help us to still feel connected with with them and with our choir, other choir members. In Liverpool, we have a sense of togetherness, a sense of community, a sense of wanting to help the most vulnerable. With a choir, you're part of something bigger. You're part of a noise of people, lots of people who, who are there for each other and can help each other cope. We come from many different backgrounds and, and many different stories. Um, yeah, we all accept each other. 
we call ourselves a family. And the beauty of, of the way we work is that we're a team, volunteers, members, staff, we're a team together. One of the things I think I realised pretty early on from when I started volunteering was just the amazing places we go for gigs. Like, I had no idea. Everybody deserves the best. Just because we're working with people who are marginalised by society, it shouldn't mean that they're marginalised in the arts. Just that energy that you, I just, I remember that feeling. I get a little bit of it through Zoom, but when we're in a room together, just that, that energy that you all bring. And uh, it's just magic, absolute magic. I adore working with you all so much. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. So basically when I was younger, I was homeless. Um, I must have been about 19, 20. I'm 26 now, but I was about that age. And I was starving, literally really, you know, hungry and that. And the choir with no name, every single week gave me an opportunity to escape the homeless life and for a few hours take your mind somewhere completely different just through singing. Without the choir with no name at that certain time in my life I would have been had no one at all and they were the only support I was receiving each week. Yes I was receiving support from other services like mental health and whatnot but they're not anything like these guys are the really good people and it's helped me so much. It got me out of a lot of trouble and it really focused my mind on going to there each Wednesday night. And like, it's just been a big part in my life, the choir with no name. They give you a little meal at the end and that little meal goes really, really far to somebody who is in a bit of a like poor background. You know what's so amazing as well with the crime of no name and the COVID? They haven't stopped. They're just going on Zoom and it's amazing. It's so cool because they've got so much drive and passion. And that was, it's really nice to see. Trish has got an actual trumpet. You guys are stepping up your game today. <laughs> what is going on? Steve Daly's giving me a bit of an air flute. Uh, I think Sal's giving me an air triangle. <laughs> is that right, Sal? Yes. Uh, Emma's giving me an air upright bass. What else am I seeing? John, I'm going to interpret that as a theremin. Yes! <laughs> Bit of air theremin. It's like almost is an air instrument on its own. It's just invaluable the way that the choir does and all the trustees and everybody. It's just a place where I just feel that I can be me and I know that's okay. The service that they provide for us is unique to us. So I feel that I've got a support group and I've got a toolbox that I can use. My family have been to see us and, and they're just so proud of me. Let's stretch those gorgeous faces out. Stretch it out for me. You stop being the identity of I am homeless um, and, and start creating the identity that's more about who you are, not who you're not. One of the premises of the choir is that whatever your role, you sing. Everybody joins in the singing and that's the that's the equaliser and that's the fun and joy. But it's given me a lot more confidence in myself. I uh, barely went out the house before I went to the choir and I've made new friends as well. I had a health scare last year as well and they were there to support me right through that. I don't know what I'd do if it wasn't there. The moment we've all been waiting for, or at least I have. <laughs> the instrumental section! Air instruments at the ready, what are you going to choose? In the choir with no name, everybody just smiles automatically. <laughs> it creates something really beautiful. When I sang with you outside the Maritime Museum, yeah. Uh, in September, I think I'd only been in the choir for like two or three months. And I looked at the Liverpool skyline and yeah. realised I was singing in a city that's full of love. Oh. And it blew my mind. I mean, it just literally was like, you know, when you ask if you belong, 
yeah, I felt like I belonged and that was Aww. wonderful. We are bursting through the barricades, reaching for the sun. We are.